When you think of Super Mario Maker, you probably think of a crazy level like this. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! This is Kaizo. While traditional Mario games can be tough, they tend to give you many different ways to approach a stage, meaning that if something doesn't work, you can approach it from a different angle. Kaizo levels get rid of this luxury. You don't do things the way the maker intended, uh, you lose. Oh, right in the Krongus. In a way, Kaizo levels are almost like playing an entirely different game using the same engine. There's no exploration, there's no secret areas, just raw execution. Coming to Mario Maker 2 with no experience in 2D Mario at all, I struggled to beat even the game's story mode without hundreds of clumsy deaths. I hate this. Give me my third dimension. Oh wait, can I get that? Or am I gonna die? Is that bait? Am I getting baited right now? I'm probably getting baited. As a result of this, I was obviously at a huge disadvantage to the many talented Mario Maker players out there. People like Lil' Curbs, Arator, Panga, and Grand Pooh Bear, to name a few, have crushed levels in record time that I couldn't even dream of beating myself, let alone quickly. So I avoided them and found my content elsewhere. Versus mode, troll levels, endless challenges. Heck, even letting an AI create challenges for me all so I could avoid having to embarrass myself in front of the entire Mario Maker community. But after doing the majority of everything else Mario Maker had to offer and racking up nearly 3,000 hours in the game, I decided it was finally time to stop hiding and face my fears. The only question was, how? With every level seeming so intimidating and so much crazy tech to learn, I didn't even know where to start. Until I got a message from my friend Panga. He was planning a trip to California for TwitchCon, but wanted to take a pit stop here along the way, and of course I'm always down to hang, so I said yes. But this gave me an idea. What better way to learn Kaizo than from one of the best Kaizo players and makers I know? We both wanted to collab while he was in town anyways, so he agreed. Once Panga was in town, we did a bit of talking in advance to figure out the best way for him to teach me, and we ended up settling on a level he made himself, Professor Panga Shell Jumps. This level was perfect, as it introduced pretty much every variation of shell jumping, a much needed skill in many Kaizo levels that requires a good understanding of the game's mechanics, all in a single stage. After we had decided on a level to play, we booted up my stream, and for the next two hours, I worked my way through the level. Okay, so this is where we're starting. This is when the lesson begins. I'm just gonna try to go through this level here, and it's an entire shell jump tutorial. And he's gonna he's gonna tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, and I've I played this a long time ago, but I oh, forgot. You beat it. I t but it took me a long time. Oh, did it? <laughs> it took me a very long time. <laughs> so here we go. Let's start it up. As I played, Panga coached me on how to approach each new jump, as well as what I was doing wrong while trying them out myself. All right, so you go like, <laughs> you go bonk, 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 and you throw the shell up. Okay. And the shell goes like, woo, and then as it goes like there, you go bonk here, do the shell, and go boop, boop, and then you okay. catch the shell, and you're going to go boop, boop, and then you get to the top, and there uh, you are. <laughs> okay. And then that's where, that, and then you're done. Yeah. Okay. Then you get there. I think I understand. It took the full two hours, but eventually I had made it through the entire stage. And for the first time in my Mario Maker career, the very thing that I was once afraid of had begun to feel a bit more approachable. Oh! Oh, we got it, dude. <laughs> that was huge. Dude. That was pretty massive. <laughs> Big gaming. What a moment. That's definitely a moment. However, I knew that what I had learned wouldn't be worth anything if I didn't try to apply it, so I gave myself a goal. Ten days of nothing but grinding Kaizo levels with a final exam. Beating a level made by and picked by Panga himself. Uh, but yeah, well, I don't know. Have you have you given it some thought? Or are you still thinking about it? You can try Skyzo as a classic. Oh, classic? You think, you think we can do the classic, dude? Yeah, I mean... Moon, or not Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Mewtwo King played it and he beat it. Okay, well, you know what? I think that's a good one. It's the first level he made in Mario Maker. It's a classic. As you can see, definitely not free. It has only a thousand clears out of 2.4... Is that million? Yeah. 2.4 million attempts. Um, so this is kind of going to be the final boss. The level he chose for me was Super Skyzo, the first ever level he uploaded on his Mario Maker 2 account. In a way, it was poetic. 
I was beginning my journey into Kaizo Mario Maker levels with the beginning of his level creation in the game. To say I was nervous would honestly just be a complete lie. With a clear rate of just 0.04%, I knew it would be no joke, so I had to make the most of these next 10 days. Before the 10 days started, I did some brainstorming with Panga and other members of the Mario Maker community to build a list of well-known Kaizo Makers sorted by difficulty, with the goal of playing levels from each of them each day. Will my knowledge of Super Mario Maker 2 combined with Panga's coaching be enough to get me across the finish line? Day 1 to start the 10-day journey, I began with levels by a maker named Bufflin. Most of Bufflin's levels fall in the clear range of about 1-2% and aren't too tech-heavy. They rely mainly on some tight movement, tight timing, and fairly good air control, but have no crazy tricks like reclaimers or shell jumps. This was perfect for me, as it allowed me to focus entirely on a few skills rather than blasting me with everything at once. It took a while for me to settle in, but once I did, the clears really started to come in, with most levels taking me 15 minutes or less to complete. To end the day, I attempted one of his harder levels, Flightless Bird, that Pang himself actually had the world record on. This one was a bit more of a challenge, but I was still able to knock it down after about 30 minutes or so. Boom! We're in there, dude! I knew it, dude! I was feeling it on that one. I was like, this is gonna be the one right here! In total, I beat 19 levels on day one and felt ready to move things up to the next level. After what felt like a very successful day one, I hopped into day two feeling cautiously optimistic. Today's levels were by Revolve. Revolve's levels had a similar but slightly lower clear rate to that of Bufflin's and introduced a few new concepts I wasn't really tested on in day one. Object throws, assisted shell reclaims, and bomb spin jumps. While these things were fairly simple in nature and not incredibly input heavy, it did mean that I had more to think about and expect while working my way through each stage. All in all, I'd say I adapted fairly well, and by the end of the day, I had beaten a similar number of stages to day one. Today's maker was Ray67, a maker whose levels were definitely a step up from those that I'd played so far, and the first maker that I'd seen since I had started that had Team Shell levels, a series of levels made by the community that are focused on shell-specific tech, such as shell drums. This was a bit scary, as while I had handled the first few days of Kaizo pretty well so far, I knew that anything that had to do with shells was a weak point for me, but I knew I couldn't run away from it forever. Fortunately, Ray's levels were fairly forgiving. While they did involve shell jumping, a majority of the jumps weren't the raw mid-air shell jumps that you're probably used to. They were instead simple shell throws that only really required a throw back at the right time and were fairly lenient to time. I messed them up a bit at first, but after trying my best to remember and apply what Panga had taught me just a few days prior, I was able to quickly identify what I was doing wrong and make adjustments until I could get them consistent, something that I was incapable of doing before. Okay, that was good adjustment, good adjustment. We gotta be a little bit more quick to turn around though, but I did get the shell grabs, so. One of the things that Panga said I needed to work on is just, you know, continue to adjust quicker. Like, you need to analyze every death figure out why did you do it wrong, right? As the day came to a close, I felt like for the first time that I was beginning to really make progress. I had my work cut out for me, but with well over 40 levels under my belt, it felt like things were really beginning to click. I just need to- I'm, I'm gonna try to figure out what I'm doing wrong with the grab, dude. I need to- I need to, like, problem solve this. Okay, there we go. Oh! I figured it out. I, I think I figured out what I did wrong. I was trying something different that time, but I guess I just needed one extra attempt. As I neared the halfway point of my grind, things really upped in intensity. For the fourth day, I played levels by Snoopy, and this was the first time I ran into levels with a daunting clear rate of under 0.25%. While the majority of his levels fortunately weren't this intense, it was a sign that these makers were really starting to up the intensity in terms of what they were capable of. Today's focus was on two things more shell mechanics, and reading. While things like shell jumping are fairly straightforward and easy to see progress on, there's another part of improving at Kaizo that's not so obvious. Reading. In every well-made Kaizo level, nothing is out of place. Every coin, every arrow, every block all have meaning. However, to the untrained eye, it might not be so obvious as to what they all mean. For example, on a stage like this, most of the indicators are fairly straightforward. Land on this coin to continue jumping, throw the shell right when you reach this point, stuff like that. But sometimes on more complex sections, you have to really connect the dots between the indicators and what's being asked of you to do. Like here, where there's exactly five arrows letting me know that I need to jump on this shell five times before moving further in the level. Like everything, reading Kaizo levels is a skill that takes time to improve, and with every maker using them differently, I had a lot of learning to do. On this level, I got stuck on this particular section for over 30 minutes before having to look up a clear video because I was having a hard time figuring it out. I might look up a clear video for this. 
I assume someone has uploaded this, because I don't understand. I don't get it. I eventually got the clear, however, it did cost me a bit of my sanity along the way. Dude, what if I- what if I just had no hair of any type ever and I was like a snake? Like a- like a lizard. <laughs> That'd be crazy. No hair, no facial hair, no- no any hair. No eyebrow hair, nothing, dude. Am I a lizard person? Uh, you know, I've been told by the request of Mr. Zuckerberg not to answer this question, so... I cannot answer, I'm sorry. Whoa, crazy guy over here. 5607, but I will say half of that was me trying to figure out what the heck was going on. But that's just part of the Kaizo adventure. As I approached the halfway point of the journey, day five was dedicated to the maker Cry For Help, or Panda underscore Cry For Help. This guy was no joke, and it was the first time I saw a level by one of these makers with a clear rate of under 0.1%. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to be attempting a level as brutal as that while I was still learning, but seeing that number was still pretty chilling, as I could tell I was moving up to a higher echelon of difficulty in terms of what these levels could throw at me. To start, I picked a level by him called Episty, with a pretty high clear rate. 0.71%, which was quite a bit higher than the hardest level I'd cleared so far. I chose this one because I wanted something a bit on the easier side to warm up and ease into the grind before attempting something harder. But it didn't take me long to realize that something seemed a bit off here. The trick density on this level was insane, and as I progressed further and further in the stage, the inputs required to keep going were way higher than anything I'd attempted so far. Slowly, I chipped away at it, but checking the clear video after 45 minutes of grinding, it was clear to me that I still had a long way to go, and the tech required seemed nearly out of my leap. Okay, you guys ready? I'm about to- I'm about to be gaming. Uh, don't pay attention to this. No, don't pay- you don't need to see this. That's not important. Okay, here we go. I'm gaming. I'm gaming! It's actually a very high-res video. Okay, so I'm doing all this right so far. Yeah, this is when it's- it, it gets crazy right about here. Like, you do like a little, what the heck, and you do it again? Like, wh Dude, I don't even know- <laughs> Dude, I don't- I don't know if I could do that, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't see the second half, but like, dude, that is actually crazy. Rather than spend the entire stream on my warm-up level, I decided to step away, the first time in this journey where I actually didn't finish the level I started. I didn't see it as a loss, though, because the whole point of these 10 days was to get as much exposure to Kaizo as I could, and that definitely showed me I had a long way to go. This did mean that the clear rates on these levels weren't always what they seemed. There's a pretty dedicated and very experienced Kaizo community in Mario Maker, and Levels like these are the kinds that those players flock to, while the casual player avoids them like the plague. These two things combined are more than enough to skew clear rates, so I definitely needed to be more cautious moving forward. Fortunately, the rest of the day was fantastic. I could definitely tell my reading ability had gone up significantly, as I found myself getting further into a stage before failure, making for fast clear times. I also hit a big milestone, beating my first ever Kaizo stage that had a legitimate standard shell jump in it. Shell jumping was my kryptonite, and in the past, the mere sight of one was enough to scare me beyond belief and doom whatever challenge I was doing. Heck, my own chat even frequently would throw out a rip run or a GG in chat when one appeared because they knew that there was no chance that I'd be able to beat it. Oh, wait a minute. Is it over? Let's go. Huge. It's been said that the best way to overcome your fear is to face it head on, and today, that's exactly what I did. Sure, I still had a long way to go, but finishing day 5 and the halfway mark of my training left me feeling actually confident, something that I'd never really felt before in my time playing the game. As I officially passed the halfway mark of my training, I felt that most of the stuff I needed to know had already been learned, so today was spent on continuing to improve my skills. Playing levels by a maker named Casper today, I took a small detour to work on a bit of 3D Kaizo, something that's very different from all of the other themes, but spent most of my time just continuing to build up my reading and muscle memory. Today did feature the longest grind I'd had so far on a multi-section shell jump level called Zatar, but outside of that, day 6 went according to plan. It's like my brain has cleared up, and it all makes sense. And you're like, why didn't I think of this sooner? Right now, I, I'm there. I'm having my Jimmy Neutron brain blast moment. Oh, Jimmy Neutron! Brain blast! He's done it. Big. 
Sometimes you just gotta go Jimmy Neutron mode. 121.49. Day 7 introduced me to the maker Tracken, a maker whose levels range from incredibly accessible to a newer player to team shell levels that push the limits of what Mario Maker is capable of. Since I'd been grinding levels for a week now, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on the easier stuff, so after a short warm-up, I decided on a level called Cave of Forgotten Shells. While it had a lot going on, this level was eye-opening for me. For the first time in the entire grind, things didn't seem overwhelming. Sure, it was technical and required pretty tight timing on some of the tricks, but as I played through it, there wasn't a section where I was lost as to what to do. And after just under one hour, I had cleared it, despite its clear rate being under half of a percent. We've done it! A bit later on in the night, I attempted a level called A Machine for Pigs 2. Even though it had a different style than the level I had played earlier, I was still able to keep up. This level contained all types of shell jumps. Left side shell jumps, back shots, standard shell jumps. And finally, I could feel everything beginning to come together. Although it ended up taking me over an hour to complete, the longest level had been in the grind so far, the fact that I completed it at all was a big accomplishment, as I know the raise fire playing these levels a week ago wouldn't have even come close. As I reached the final three days, there's not really much more to be said. Playing levels by the fantastic makers Space Pig and Salt Lake, as well as returning to levels by some of the previous makers I'd already played, I focused purely on consistency, getting my shell jump timing better, maintaining better air control on things like Z-spins, and cleaning up some of the stuff I was particularly messy on, like ground pound cancels and twirls in New Super Mario Bros. U. Ending my stream on the 10th day, I was still nervous to play Panga's level, but I felt I had prepared as best as I could. If I could stay focused, then just maybe I had a chance to prove to Panga that I had improved and passed the final exam that he had given me. I mean, just look at this. The raised fire from 10 days ago could have only dreamed to have been able to do a level like this, and yet here I was. It is a skill issue. Actual skill issue. But that's okay, not for long. Not skill issue for much longer because we're gonna get the clear right here, okay? Boom! It's that easy, guys. Sometimes you just gotta call your shots. <laughs> you just gotta say, I'm gonna clear it, and then go and clear it. After a short break from Kaizo, I started up my stream on Saturday, November 5th, with a very clear goal in mind. The stream would only end when I beat Panga's level. I was prepared to sit there for over 24 hours if I needed to, because I wasn't about to come up short after putting in over 40 hours of work the past couple weeks. So again, you read the title of the stream right. If we beat the Panga level, the stream ends. Which means it could last five minutes, it could last five hours. I don't know. But this is the level that Panga picked for me to play after doing the 10 days of Kaizo. It is the first ever level he uploaded on Super Mario Maker 2, and has a clear rate of 0.04%, has over 2.4 million attempts, and I don't know, hopefully I don't add 2.4 million onto, uh, of my own attempts onto the pile, but we're gonna have to see. Panga caught wind of this, as he actually happened to be streaming himself whenever I went live, and actually decided to play through the level himself, just to refresh his memory on what I was to expect in my own grind. Anyways, what I was trying to say is, I want to go and replay the levels I uploaded. He even updated his stream title to tell everyone to watch me instead, which was funny, but increased the pressure I had already put on myself by quite a bit. <laughs> I opened up Mario Maker on Twitch. And the title just says, watch this stream with an arrow pointing at mine. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good, I like that. Taking him about 15 minutes to reclear his own level, he then ended his stream, sending everyone over to me to watch my own progress. This continued to add to the nerves, as now I had not only my own stream watching me, but all of Panga's viewers and Panga himself to see if I could pull it off, or if I'd come up short like I usually do when I attempt crazy challenges like this. Welcome, Raiders. I am trying to beat this level that I think Panga just played. But this time, everything felt different.
Despite the fear of failure and all of the pressure from all of the eyes watching me, it was almost as if I had managed to tap into a part of myself that I didn't even know existed until I started this journey, and I really got into my flow state. There were certainly a few sections that gave me quite some trouble. But I found myself being able to read what to do next without much issue, and once I was able to make some mental notes on what inputs to press on each section, my consistency began to improve at a very rapid rate. At 1 hour and 45 minutes, I reached the final section of the level for the very first time, and much to my surprise, I was actually able to one-shot it. Okay, what is this? That is, until... Oh, wait, where's the thing? It's right there! No! What? There's a muncher! Where did that come from? Who put the spring there? Why'd you do that? My morale was crushed. You see, the thing about Panga's levels that I didn't account for in my 10 days of training were trolls. While Panga is well known for his incredibly complex, yet fairly polished level design, he's also known for throwing in little tricks and trolls, just to remind the player that things aren't always as they seem in his stages. And also, I think he just likes to mess with people. Super Skyzo is no exception, containing hidden Kaizo blocks scattered all throughout the level to mess up the player. Wait, so do we do this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are there so many of these dang Kaizo blocks, man? As well as a hidden spring behind the goal, and a falling muncher to punish the player who thought the level ended when they reached the goal. I'm not gonna lie, in that moment I was shaken to the core. While I don't usually tilt very easily, all of the attempts I made after that death seemed to be getting worse and worse. I began to doubt myself. Was that run I had just a fluke? Maybe I should have practiced more. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to do this challenge at all. Fortunately, my chat caught on pretty quick as there was a fairly sudden change in my demeanor and suggested I get up and take a break. Begrudgingly, as the clock passed two hours, I agreed. Crap. Okay, one second. I'm gonna go take... I'm gonna go get water right quick uh, and stuff, and then I'm gonna stretch just really briefly. I'll be back in like one minute. I'm gonna see if I can... Uh, Get the little boost I need to get through, dude. We have a, we're pretty close, though. Taking a few minutes to grab a drink, splash water on my face, and clear my head, I returned to the grind. Pushing all of those doubts and fears away, I looked at the facts. I had managed to make it to the end of the level I had literally spent weeks preparing for in under two hours. Sure, dying at the end to a troll like that sucked, but the fact that I had even gotten there so quickly was telling in itself. Picking myself back up, I began attempts again, and before I knew it, I was at another run that could go the distance. My hands were a bit shaky from being so close to the goal, but I did my best to hold on. The final section involved some pretty straightforward dodging on this platform, and as I jumped back and forth, I held my breath. This was it. After a few close calls, I had made it through again, and this time I wasn't about to let a silly troll keep me from crossing that finish line. Go, 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 go! Gaming! Oh! We've done it! That's huge! Oh, big gaming! 21831. Woo! That was huge. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I got to the end, and I, I was like, I knew that the thing was about to go away, like the little wall on the P-gate, but I, I was like behind on the movement from what I did it the first time, so I was like, dude, I don't know if I can make this, we gotta do a little... A little finagle action, you know, we gotta like, woo, like do a little S, S curve, right? But we were able to make it happen. In less time than both Panga and myself expected, I had beaten one of the hardest and lowest clear rate levels in Mario Maker that I'd ever attempted. Something that the raise fire from just a few weeks ago would have thought to be impossible. The takeaway here? Don't be afraid to give something new a shot, even if it looks scary. If you're willing to put in the time to learn and improve, you will get there with enough work. Thanks for watching.